And so the stage is set for what should be a memorable match coming to you exclusively through the cameras of Network 10 Sport in Australia and New Zealand. And after this break, we'll be back for the start of the 1980 Tooth Cup Final. The scene at Leichhardt with referee Greg Hartley in charge of his third Cup Final. And he blows time on before what looks to be a, an almost capacity crowd here at Leichhardt to what should be certainly one of the most controversial Cup Finals and uh, referee Hartley is going to put the very first scrum of the match down. Arthur Beetson comes across and pats Peter Wynn on the shoulder as if to say good tackle. It certainly was a good tackle and one that uh, Balmain uh, would be a little bit disappointed in with Wayne Pierce losing the ball right from the kickoff. But it didn't look to me to be forward though, Keith, just the same. It looked as though it was quite le legitimately knocked back. But uh, it's a Balmain ball. Yes, and this is Schaefer playing in number 14 for the Balmain side. Has been already laced with... Uh, high drama I as the commentator on seven years of cup football have uh, not been throwing a dummy like I have been here tonight let me tell you but there has been high drama here up until 15 minutes before the teams took the field I can't tell you any more than that but these late Belmain changes have absolutely well they've thrown me as a commentator into utter confusion to be very honest with you I'll get an official announcement from the promoters of the Cup and broadcast as soon as I can. But to Tiger fans watching, I would imagine you're quite shocked. Lavers now. Taken by 10. That's Steve Sharp for Parramatta. This man is Whitaker. And Sharp in the tackle with Gerard and Beetson. Morris. Knight. Pringle. And what a momentous must be for Pringle who's come back from that crippling disease that he suffered during the off season and he was almost a shell of a man and he's had to be recalled off the bench to take a first grade spot here tonight Percy Knight and Neil Hunt has put it down that's a knock on scrum to go down just inside the Parramatta 22 I thought he covered it particularly well though, because it was a very uh, difficult bounce and uh, he certainly wasn't favourite I thought he did well to, uh, to cover it as well as he did. So the second scrum of the match is won by Balmain. Percy Knight taken by Peter Wynn, who goes in over the top. Pierce, Filipana, they're outside the 22, and this seems to be a more enthusiastic Parramatta defensive pattern than the one we saw on Sunday. Morris met by Salkowitz. Beats and charges in, Edge is there, so is Wynn. Whitaker is 12 for Balmain. Knight, run Whitaker again on the 22 line. That's the one you see. Players in centre field. Webster, Knight, 17 as Pringle. Sterling as the tackler low. Beatson over the top. Last tackle coming up for the Tigers. They may be tempted to bomb. Whitaker goes from dummy half and the scrum will form a few metres inside the 22 line. Now here's the announcement from the promoters, the one I've been looking for. Stand by. Parramatta in possession. I took my eyes off it looking at official screed that I've just been given. That's Peter Wynn tackled on the 22 line. The changes to the Belmain side tonight have been made so that the club complies with Premiership rules that seven players on the field tonight must have played in the Belmain Premiership match last Sunday. That's the official document that I have. I thought that applied um, certainly, but uh, doctor certificates I was under the impression could change that ruling. So there's another question that remains just at this moment unanswered, but I can't give you that answer at the moment. Sterling. Full back is Schaefer. Bad bounce for him, picked up by Brett Kenny, and a nice tackle by Schaefer. That was a bad bounce for that fellow. Kenny takes it ahead further for Parramatta. Dummy half is Stephen Edge. It's a knock on by Kenny play the ball it certainly was a well-placed kick by sterling but uh I think from should have moved into it. yes but from balmain's point of view it was probably just as well that he did because Parramatta had five players on the left hand side to uh, only wingham uh, lloyd Mar uh, wayne miranda and uh, five eight lloyd martin if they right. moved it out there was trouble he seemed a bit slow in getting up to it keith i think he could have got it on the first bounce well, instead of a, i think it was a well-placed kick mm. penalty to Parramatta, right in front 30 meters out keith barnes i've got to ask this question of you not as a fellow common but as secretary manager of Balmain Leagues Club and a man closely associated with the club. And uh, 
What knowledge did you have of these late Balmain changes, if any? Well, the first knowledge I got was when I walked into the Balmain room 10 minutes before kickoff, waiting for the players to take the field, and the uh, notification had come through that uh, they didn't comply to the rules if they did put on the original uh, selected team. And uh, therefore, they were virtually instructed to, uh, to change the team and replace three of their selected players, I think uh, which they did. I think the reason for that, Keith, would have been for the fact that um, there were three of the four reserves who had played last Sunday, and if they're fit enough to be reserves, uh, well, I suppose they're fit enough to be on the field. Yes, of course, but then if the players weren't fit enough to uh, to play on the Saturday and they are better than the reserves, well, obviously you'd want to put your, your best side in a formation such as the Tooth Cup. But it still didn't comply with the rule, though. Anyway, this youngster, 21-year-old Michael Collins, has kicked 13 out of 14 goals in the last... What a big night for the lad. He's put it high, but it's wide. That won't do his confidence any good, Frank Hyde. That certainly will not. Well, what a, what a start to a cup final. I... I'm not talking about the on-field action, I'm talking about the off-field action. And uh, it's like being a quiz master without the answers to the final $64,000 question. Neil Hunt now will play the ball. 12 metres on the Parramatta side way line. Peter Wynn. Tackler is Percy Knight in there looking for the big Singapore Airlines Superstar Award. Jeff Gerard, the bearded front row forward for Parramatta. Tackler was Whitaker. Edge is the dummy half. Sterling blindside. A dummy to Beatson. Trying to pick up Glover on the open, or on the blindside, I should say. Still 10 short of the halfway. Sharp. Hilditch. They're backing up tonight. Win. Sterling blindside. Glover. Perfect Ooh, pass, well run onto. 10 metres into Balmain territory, straight through his wing, opposing uh, his opposing number, Davison. And that's the end of uh, six. And this scrum 10 metres away from the Balmain 22 line. Good for a handful for young Davidson over there, although uh, he is a talented player and did well in the uh, game against Canterbury on Sunday. Uh, the line out there, Keith Parramatta having much uh, uh, confidence in their hooker. Squaring up like this. Mm. Wayne Pierce, tackled by Patterson. Knight. That's Davison. It's almost like studying a set of colours as they go to the barrier when they get there they change three sets of colors on you Webster to play it McMahon Breeze is behind Balmain in the first quarter that ball is going over the dead ball line for a 22 place restart during our quarter breaks tonight we're going to take the opportunity of talking to entertaining the attitudes uh, towards the tactics being adopted adopted by these two sides in the first break we'll be talking um, well, Keith Barnes, I should say, will be talking to Ray Price on the sideline. I looked down and it had me on the sideline. I thought that'll be a good trick. Just outside the 22. Sharp now. Gerard. Sterling. That kick looks good. Miranda's back there, well taken by Miranda. Schaefer around Kenny. Lost the ball. Whoa. Yes, Collins has it, the uh, young goal kicking winger. Kenny is the dummy half. Beatson. Gerard. From a standing start, Gerard. Come out of a little fat, Frank. They certainly are not running onto the ball either, Keith. And uh, Balmain, of course, is uh, uh, doing something similar. Nobody can say Hildridge didn't run onto that ball. No, he certainly did. Edge is the dummy half. Blindside through Sterling to Beatson, a short ball, and that's Neil Hunt. Hunt now takes it up to the quarter line. He's a pretty good player, but can't kick left-footed, obviously. And a scrum down on the Balmain 22 line. Well, he has to be better than a pretty good player. He has to be a great player to keep uh, Gary Dowling in his right, earth right. Scrums at the moment, gentlemen, 3-0 in favour of the Tigers. Penalties one apiece. That's at the 10th minute first quarter of the 1982 Cup Final. A 
apparently cooling it up. Oh, gee, that's a dubious feed. It's a penalty to Parramatta. Ooh. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Uh, your pick told a fairly obvious story. And so uh, this lad, Michael Collins, in number five for Parramatta, will be taking a much more difficult kick than his first unsuccessful one. And there it is. 22 metres out and 10 in from touch. He's only 5 foot 8 and he weighs 11 stone. A local junior from the Granville Cheetahs. He's a bank clerk. And in 1980, he scored the, uh, the following in 23 grade, 4 tries and 23 goals, a total of 58. In reserves, 3 tries and 51 goals for a total of 111. In all grades, a total this year of 169 points from seven tries and 74 goals and played in the 1979 President's Cup side at Parramatta. And he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders at the moment. That is getting away too. So it's Olsen Filipana to take it out for the Tigers and Salkowitz number three for Parramatta. Forcing him back in the tackle. I Good defence, wasn't it? Oh, word it is. I said to Keith on the phone today, he said Salkowitz is back in first grade. I said, yes. And I said, the raps on him are very big. Apparently, he's playing as good a football as ever, and particularly in defence. His captain, Ron Hildy, said, I've got no worries about him containing Filipana, which is a big statement. Misunderstanding between Pringle and Webster. Webster tackled by Wynn and Edge. Knight blindside. Martin's going up with him. A good run though, wasn't it, to get yes, that time? he got his pass away too, but I think he's, it's, Davidson has missed it. Hardly having a good, close look at it. You're lucky to get that one back. Sterling around the legs. Sterling and Knight, two men that you should pay particular attention to. They've gone into this match level at the head of the Singapore Airlines Superstar Series points. In fact, I'll get you an update on players out there tonight who have got a chance of um, taking out that major award. Parramatta still to win a scrum. Penalty to them. That's an incorrect feed again. I think you'll find. Hartley again indicating to Percy Knight he wants it in the centre. Yes, I'm a little bit surprised at Balmain's reluctance to use this breeze. Uh, I would have been looking in for Alan McMahon to uh, put the ball downfield on that yes. six-tackle tackle rather than take uh, take the scrum when it was switched to Rod Morris. So the experience of Arthur Beetson uh, was well to the fore there. You may not have seen it, but uh, he had no hesitation in saying, give the kid another kick. Only one way to get him over whatever nerves he might have is to give him plenty of practice, and that's exactly what he's getting at the moment. Arthur Beetson on camera. We read today in both newspapers, The Sun and The Mirror, about the deal being clinched for him to become a publican at Moreton Bay in 1981. And uh, his loss to New South Wales football, I'm sure, will be a magnificent gain to the, the home state of Arthur Beetson. Collins from way out there. That's looking better. He's got two points in the first points of the cup final. Parramatta lead Balmain 2-0 after six minutes of time gone on the blue and gold flags of Leichhardt Oval. Those that have made the journey down through some rather dicey weather tonight have their first chance to flutter in the breeze. Yes, and that'll certainly do young Collins a power of good. Uh, yeah. He must feel about 10 foot tall now because there's a wonderful atmosphere here and there'd be nothing better than to see the ball sailing between those pegs to right, put right. your first points on the board. It was a great risk too, you know, because had he missed that one, Keith, he might have just gone straight down. Wayne Miranda restarts for the Tigers. This is Neil Hunt, who had a... I can only use one word, he had an awful game on Sunday and he could stung back into a brilliant Neil Hunt exhibition tonight and he's already shown that he might be just on and on night as Glover runs off beats him short and narrow like a lot of players should but they don't Edge is the dummy half Sterling Gerard. oh gee that could never have been a shepherd against uh, Patterson but winners with the ball for Parramatta 
10 meters out. That man is offside, Labors, is he not? It's through Gerard. Calls a runner. Picks up Steve Sharp. Nine meters short of halfway. 2-0 in favor of the uh, famous Grouse Eels here in the Tooth Cup final of 1980. A chip by Sterling. Straight to the waiting arms of Pierce. Tackled by Patterson. McMahon playing in the centers. Judith. Oh, what a crunching tackle from Beetson on McMahon. A shoulder and McMahon bounced off him like a rubber ball. Whitaker working off Percy Knight. Gildich was the tackler. Knight. Martin. Webster, low tackle by Patterson. Martin, Knight. A cross ping, Pringle, picked up by McMahon. Back to Miranda, lost, Ooh. picked up by Hildish for Parramatta. Fluctuating fortunes in the game at the moment. That pickup of Alan McMahon reminiscent of a, a goal that we'll be showing you at halftime in the uh, cup final. We'll show you them all and then, of course, the winning try for the golden Volvo from Tynan Motors of Sylvania. Oh, man's handling a little shaky thing under some heavy defensive pressure. That's right. And oh. Oh. Knocked on by Filipano. And uh, since that goal was kicked, Keith, Parramatta seem to be playing with a lot more confidence. Yes, they've lifted their game. The superstar Billings uh, gentlemen, Sterling and Knight on six. Three points clear of McMahon, Whitaker and Peter Wynn. Sterling to feed. Centre field, 39 metres out. Penalty to Balmain. Loose arm against the Parramatta hooker, Stephen Edge. And a chance for Miranda to level it up. They've got the breeze at their backs in the first quarter. The Tigers of Balmain. Well, I'm doing my seventh cup final and uh, these scenes are very, very reminiscent of that record crowd that attended the 76 final. Tigers defeated the Bears of North Sydney. Uh, and I'm taking into account that uh, the Latcham Robinson stand was only um, only a dream at the time. That crowd, by the way, was around 21,000, but that new stand has occupied or is able to seat a lot of people. But still the hill area, or the grass section of uh, Leichhardt on the other side, here it is, is packed to capacity, and people have taken some of the vantage points that I can recall occupied in the 76 final on top of toilet blocks and uh, backyard fences and you name it they've grabbed it I can't believe the crowd as big as it is in view of the scatty showers and thunderstorms we've had in Sydney during the day <coughs> Miranda rocking to and fro as he hits it sweet it's getting away it's away and Parramatta lead Still by two points to nil, as it will come down now for the 22 drop to restart. Well, certainly this will go down no matter what the result is the most controversial cup final that we've covered. Filipana taken by Patterson. Collins is over there in five, assisting in the tackle. Knight labors, and then he on the dummy they've all bought it this man running onto it and galloping towards the 22 line was uh, the uh, fullback or in fact center alan mcmahon who's injured a knee it appears knight morris over the top beats him sterling was around the legs knight martin danger player held by kenny got it back to knight up to the 20 and beats him again in the tackle. It's a Parramatta ball picked up by their number 10, Steve Sharp. Peter Wynn. Peter Wynn galloping out towards the scoreboard flank. McMahon is still quite uh, quite groggy. He's into the shoulder, uh, right? Frank Hyde, thank you. Is it his wrist or? Well, he, gra he grabbed his shoulder when he, when he first got up. Sterling, Wynn, and he's put a a let off for Balmain. They were playing with Alan McMahon virtually as a passenger and they were looking a bit brittle out there. Here's Pringle in 17. Tackled outside the 22 line. Knight, Martin, Pierce, talented player. Eight metres from the quarter. Gerard and Patterson doing the work there in defence. Filipana. Patterson again makes the tackle. Kenny over the top. Hello, Sokowitz and Pringle exchange blows in the back play. Martin. Knight, 
Webster and the Tigers will race home. Miranda has lost it out the back door. Scooped away by Hilde. She has trouble for Balmain. This is Kenny now. And he's taken ball and all by Filipana. Oh, it's probably if he'd been able to get Collins yes. into the clear. Hey. Gerard. He's lost it. It's Balmain back onto the attack through Webster. And Hildage goes over the top, Sterling down below. Both sixes and sevens. Wayne Miranda is co completely unconscious. Um, oh, struggling. He's got uh, great difficulty in getting to his feet, the Balmain winger. Quarter time in a sensational start to the cup final. Parramatta two. Balmain no score. Quarter about to get underway as the Parramatta cheer squad file from the field after a routine done by both the Parramatta and Penrith girls. Adding to a sea of colour here at uh, Tooth Cup final night 1980. A retaliation immediately from McMahon sends it straight to Neil Hunt. A test for the young fullback. And Pringle over the top gives him another test up. Just to remind him that he's playing top grade and he's in a cup final. Sterling again met by Pringle. Gerard now looking a little bit bewildered as he sees which forward actually Hilditch is nine meters from the halfway line. Parramatta two, Balmain nil. Patterson. Mm. Well, Patterson was just mm. simply lacking a runner. Yes, he was, because if either Sterling or Beetson had been that yard uh, further up, the gap had been broken. Gerard, Edge. Edge is still going. Salkowitz is there with him. Salkowitz is down to the 22. Phil Aparna making the tackle. Salkowitz plays it back for Edge to Sterling. Now to win. Up goes on the inside. That's him with the ball now. Last tackle for Parramatta, and this scrum will go down 15 metres out from the Balmain line. Parramatta looking better with the ball at the moment, Frank, and creating are. a few opportunities, aren't they? Yes, and there was a gap there uh, on two occasions in the uh, Balmain forwards, Keith, that uh, they'll need to close up before the night's out. It's a Parramatta ball, and Sterling is wrestled at the ground and dumped by Percy Knight. There certainly won't be any love lost between those two, do they? Colin and Wing getting involved, 10 metres out, centering play. I think this is where Balmain's biggest problem is going to come in this danger zone in here, 15, 20 yards from the line. Peter Wynn. Yes, we're moving up there. He's right in centre field. The line you see, that dark line, is 10 metres out from the uprights. Beatson, Patterson. Patterson puts it down. Schaefer goes away for Balmain. Outside the 22 line. A good break. Was a good run by Schaefer. Lavers. Balmain slow to back up the man possession, Keith. Yes, they are. I think they can tend to take a couple of steadiers on those occasions, mm. looking to turn them and get their backs into a position to attack. But, of course, by that time, the Parramatta defence is very, uh, very set and very too. solid. Mm. Yes. Webster now. They're right midway between the 22 and halfway. They're own end of the field, the Tigers. Knight. Short ball for Filipana, but Sulkowitz and beats them there to make the tackle. Or Kenny, in fact, number four. Whitaker. Last tackle coming up for Balmain now. Webster. Thought about popping the pass, but it's the scrum now, seven metres on Balmain's side of the halfway. Yes, I thought that pass went astray again. I was looking for McMahon to come in and... Uh, well, McMahon was looking for it too. Yes, I think he was, and uh, that's what I said. I think it went astray. Talking of McMahon, he appears completely recovered from what was either a wrist injury... Win. Driven to the ground. Adjacent to the scrum base by Wayne Pierce. Sterling, Glover, makes the extra man but runs back into the forwards. Almost breaks free. In fact, he does. Pringle makes a, a saving tackle at the finish. Glover goes away himself. Inside the 22 line. An enthusiastic match is Neville Glover having tonight. This is Patterson. Now Glover. And uh, he's held by Lloyd Martin. Now it's Gerard a dummy half. Hildage up the centre. Valmain waiting for them to come to him, Keith, instead of moving up and, and harassing them and, and Paramount in possession. Neil Hunt's coming and watch for him. There's the bomb from uh, Sterling going down to Schaefer. And the big men fly for it, and it's well taken by the young Phil Schaefer. 
a roar of approval from the Balmain fans. Whitaker held by Kenny. McMahon, Knight. Miranda around Collins. Back to Knight on the 22 line. McMahon. Oh, beats him again with another driving. Yes, he picked him out a dangerous yeah. pass by uh, Percy Knight, but of course that's what he's renowned for. He's got a lot of flair in his game, is it? Ooh. <laughs> I thought Rod Morris had yes. to get it to Lloydie Martin. Now Flavors. Pierce putting it down. A chance for Balmain, but now it's Patterson for Parramatta, giving it to Neil Hunt. He'll call Michael Collins on his inside. 10 metres short of the 22 line. 2 0 in favour of Parramatta if you've just joined the Tooth Cup final on Network 10 throughout Australia and TV1 in New Zealand. Artie Beetson. A man who I believe Parramatta cannot go into the Premiership semi finals without in their top side. And I agree. Steve Sharp now. Gerard, Sterling, Patterson, win. Samatana around the shoulders. Patterson's been felled in the back play. The ball went astray. Lost it. Is going in. This will be for the report on Patterson. Never mind about the tackle on Peter Wynn, which I know looked a little bit uh, if and buttish, but it looked okay, really. On the head-ons, I think it would prove that, but it's the tackle on Patterson. Let's try and get a head-on shot, if we can, of what happened when Patterson gave the final pass to Peter Wynn. Is that possible? Here's Patterson. Good camera. Knight went around with a swinging arm. It wasn't that tackle. I emphasize the touch judges are there talking about the other one you saw in the first instance on Michael Patterson. The penalty now. <laughs> well, I would have thought the penalty should be given back where Mike Patterson was felled. Hartley indicating a kick for goal. Yeah, that was the win tackle that the penalty's come from. Well, I'd well, be interested to have a look mm. at that tackle on Patterson again. Yes. Anyhow. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm not too. too uh, I reckon Percy Knight went in hard and went yes, in uh, chest high. I don't think it was. No, I think he hit him backwards. Okay, yeah. let's try and get it back. If you, uh, <laughs> if the <laughs> fa if the famous fighters are going to have it, no, not this man. Uh, where is he? We might have picked this up at the wrong place. It's a dicey problem at the best of times trying to find something on this head-on reel, but we've got a bit of time. Collins is setting it up in front, 30, well, about 30 meters out. Is it coming up now? I do believe. Here it is. Well, there it is. Oh, yeah, he's back to him. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that tackle. And there's no th nothing wrong with that tackle, but this is where the penalty's been awarded, where Wynn was tackled. Yeah. Collins takes the shot. The flags are up. Parramatta lead by four points to nil in what is becoming an even more controversial cup final. Well, someone must have seen something because both yeah. touch judges yeah, came right. in, so uh, maybe something was missed in the uh, just outside of camera range, but we didn't actually pick it up from here. Anyhow, at this stage, Parramatta leading by four points to nil and looking comfortable. Even Johnny Preard smiling. Balmain will need to take advantage of uh, lost balls from uh, Parramatta if they're going to get back into this game. Now it's Neil Hunt to take it out. Well, I might have misled you there when I believed it was the tackle on Michael Patterson that brought the penalty, obviously, from where the penalty was wasn't to do with the Patterson tackle at all. But let's repeat what Keith has said. Both touch judges apparently saw the same incident. Beatson. Oh, yes, picked up by Stephen Edge, capitalising on a half chance from Beatson. And then it's Peter Wynn taking it over the halfway line. And by Jove, I tell you what, this lad, he might be giving them three-point start tonight, but he's certainly trying to pick them up. Gerard. Patterson's on the inside. Stella the outside and the little halfback uh, who starred for Fairfield Patrician Brothers on this night some three or four years ago sharp a short ball to Peter Wynn Floats it back. Oh, good take by Patterson. That's the end of six. Balmain's trouble is, is not moving up to, to, to uh, defend. Yes, but let's give Parramatta the credit now because they're starting to pick up the runners as well and they've taken the Balmain defence up and they have picked the blokes up outside. But a good covering tackle by Rod Moffat. But Keith, every time that Parramatta are moving with the ball, they're moving 10 metres before they come to a Balmain defender. Now that ball is a Balmain ball. Pierce. Pierce has through a big gap between Wynn and Kenny. Kenny closes the gap. 
Well, they making enough opportunities at the moment to uh, still put a lot of pressure on uh, Parramatta, but nothing's coming of them at the moment. Filipano. Grassing. Patterson, who's done a tremendous amount of defence. Knight. And a short ball from Schaefer to Davison. On the inside, Schaefer. Coming up is Miranda. Can he make it in time? Oh. Taken to ground 10 metres out from the line and into touch for a scrum. Well, Miranda did well to get across from the right oh, wing. Yes. He, uh, it was just unfortunate that Schaefer couldn't get the pass back in field. He's a talented player, young Schaefer, and uh, did well then getting the pass away to Davison, who showed good pace up the wing and then backed up on the inside. Important scrum. Sterling, open side. I lock forward Wayne Pierce, who's cutting Sterling down every time he tries to sneak up the side of the scrum. Beatson. Beatson looking, finding Patterson. Patterson gets it away to Salka Wetz, and on it goes to Kenny. Kenny is very fast. Collins goes to the, well, was going to the inside, but Kenny was pulled down by Neil Whittaker. Rather unbelievably how Whittaker got across there so quickly. Sterling to Patterson. Ten metres short of the halfway line. Pierce was the tackler. Morris over the top. Beatson wants it. Edge sneaking away on the blind side. Back through Sharp, picked up by Wynn. Parramatta four, Balmain nil. Gerard. Up the centre goes Beatson. He'll take Sterling with him. There's Sterling into the open space. And Schaefer, good tackle by Phil Schaefer. Still they work it to the right. Hildich turns it back on the inside for Patterson. And the end of six and some good football coming out of the final. Yes, it is. And Parramatta creating havoc in the middle of the ruck, the way that uh, Gerard and Beatson are turning that pass back on the inside and the outside and picking up the runners at the moment. This is where Balmain's trouble is coming from. And they're not getting up to smother that they're ball not, carrier. They're not see. getting up, Keith. Parramatta standing that a little bit deeper, though, with yep. the ball. Schaefer, another break by the fullback. Cover tackle by Beatson. Ten metres short of the halfway. Knight. Lavers. Hildich's tackle. Knight with the basketball down to Martin. A quick ball to Filipana. Stands in the tackle. Gets it to Pierce. A big run coming up from Miranda. Martin on the inside. And he's picked up by Collins and by second row forward Steve Sharp. He couldn't do much else than that, no, Miranda. Couldn't. Now it's Whitaker. Filipana. Knight. And over the top, Gerard. Underneath was Salkowitz. This is Whitaker. Nobody with him. Look at this. Walking. Yeah, oh. he gets away from dummy half very quickly, yeah. though, Frank. Gee, they should have anticipated, Keith. Yes, I agree. I mm. wish they only had him. Schaefer now. <laughs> Ten metres out from the line. Belmain really piling on the attacking pressure. Knight. A bomb to test Neil Hunt. That's a good bomb, too. Beautifully taken. Got a loan job out. Losing his footing. Schaefer. Wrestled to the ground by Sharp. Still be tackling at the same rate as the full-time siren sounds. Martin. Beats him around the legs. Kenny over the top. Knight. Labors through Morris. Pringle. Tackle by Kenny. I think Lloydie Martin's going to get into a situation where he starts attacking because he's not creating any problems for the Parramatta outside backs That's that right. are able to come up very quickly. And uh, at the moment, he's just content to and move it out, and consequently, there's no worries for Parramatta. Miranda's pass tonight. Martin now. Filipano. Good tackle there by Patterson. That man is Martin. They've lost some ground. Now they're going across the field and ahead now. Martin. Sterling with the tackler. We're six minutes from half time with Parramatta leading by four points to nil. This is Percy Knight. Now Lavers, a quick ball away to Philip oh. Now it's Pringle. Pierce. Balmain streaming to the 22. A try coming up. Miranda will score the first try of the cup final and taking it right around. Yes. And the crowd goes absolutely wild. Well, let's say the Balmain supporters in the crowd. That was a good try. 
passing, the passing of Balmain there was, was really top class. Yes, yeah, Pringle was the one that gave oh, a very yes. good pass, and so did Wayne Pierce when he made that break there. Shake yep. up there, drew the two of them in and gave uh, Miranda a good passage, but Miranda showed good pace then to get away from his winger, and of course, being a goal kicker himself, I think he appreciated the, the advantage of getting them on underneath the sticks. <laughs> So the cup final score is four points to three with the simplest of conversion attempts for Wayne Miranda. See it head on. Percy Knight got away a very clever pass there yes, too. And uh, that was followed. Filippano picked it up well. And from there, I suppose you could say the try was on. But give Wayne Pierce full marks. He accelerated then and drew the, uh, the Parramatta yeah. defence. Yeah. And Schaefer was able to take two passes. Maybe uh, Hunt could have allowed uh, Patterson to pick up Schaefer and uh, look to cover Wayne yes. Miranda. But he didn't. And it's first points for Balmain, first try anyhow. We're just coming back live in time to see Miranda convert his own try. And there it is. New scoreline. Balmain five. Balmain five. Parramatta four. Miranda one out of two. Parramatta are moving up enthusiastically in defence, Keith, but they're not organised. They're bunching. Yes, well, I think uh, one of the big problems have, has been the Balmain. They've been forcing Balmain to play them uh, through the forwards. Balmain yeah. looking to uh, to utilise their backs at every opportunity, and uh, probably a little lacking in combination with uh, Alan McMahon being forced into the three-quarter position rather yeah. than Wayne Wiggum and Filippano are pretty uh, a pretty solid centre pairing. Labors mm -hmm. lost ball. Those mistakes. Knight recovering for Balmain, but the knock-on will uh, be played. The draw for the ground prizes here at Leichhardt tonight was conducted just before the kickoff of this match, and at this point I want to express our thanks to National Panasonic and Easterways Air Conditioning at Artaman for their contribution of products as prizes to help make this a truly big night. Thank you, National Panasonic, and thank you, Easterways Air Conditioning. Parramatta now have uh, run back from a 3-0 deficit in the scrums to be down 5-4 in that count. This is Neil Hunt. Good step there back inside, no, wasn't it, to beat Pringle? We're only four minutes out from half-time. Sharp. Watching this match tonight, a little team of under-10 Parramatta Maras brothers who were dead keen to come, but that rain forced them to postpone a long-awaited trip to oh, Blackheart tonight. Beats on the way to Sterling. And to those little fellows, my apologies. There hasn't been a spot of rain since I left you. Wouldn't it? Blow your brains out. Here's Collins. Girard, the dummy half. Sterling. And a high bomb could present troubles. Schaefer's been taken by the air. Not Yes, that's a penalty and a rightful penalty. Good refereeing, Greg Hartley. Schaefer was taken out of the game completely. You must play the ball and not the man. And <laughs> they just simply took Schaefer from underneath and took him out of that uh, action completely. Yes, and I think there were a lot of relief Balmain players there too yeah. that uh, <laughs> appreciated that because I think the points are on the board. That's right. And there, there are a lot of referees who would have allowed that too. Just quite Laurie Nichols, the... <laughs> The cheer squad leader from Balmain, he's uh, a monument to uh, to Tiger Territory. I guarantee he's more tired than the footballers when the game's finished. He's an absolute freak, Laurie. There he is, shadow sparring, left, right, and Tiger. And the Tigers are in front five cup final, two minutes from half time. A cup final tinged with sadness. Whichever way you look at it, if you're associated with rugby league and sport. Not here tonight. That great journalist, Ernie Christensen, who passed away yesterday. And as I said in Eyewitness News last night to his friends and relatives, our deepest sympathies. And I'm certain Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes <laughs> are those sentiments. Yes, good little left hook then. Yes, I agree. But partly calling Peter Wynn out. Five-four in favour of the Tigers. 
at half time as I told you earlier and that is only 60 seconds away we'll be screening the tries that made the final of the 1980 Golden Try Award and they'll be in from sixth to, to uh, through to first and then of course we'll know the winning try and which player has made that try and therefore wins the magnificent Volvo 242 GT sports sedan from Tynan Motors of Sutherland great prize the richest in rugby league individually penalty to Parramatta but the indication is shepherding is it yes I think that was what that was what the ruling was yeah. Offside, Ray O'Donnell indicates to yeah. me as I was looking down at a scrap. Offside pass. It was a bad mistake, wasn't it? Mm. And it happened so often. So Collins finding touch, Edge taking the tap. Gerard. Sterling with six more tackles. This is Patterson. Peter wins running to the left. Sterling puts another bomb up. Oh, that's a bit heavy. And it's bouncing end on end for Schaefer to run it over the dead ball line. So the full-time siren will probably, the half-time siren, I should say, will sound probably before the line dropout is taken. And Balmain are fully aware of that. Yes, and I think Schaefer did the right thing too, taking that ball, yes. because it could have happened anything then. Uh, right. Certainly he had no opportunity, but uh, if he'd allowed it to bounce, he didn't know where the Parramatta players were. And that's right. Thing. Yes, I realise that, and he's got in the back of his mind the fact that had gone dead in gold, it would have been a, uh, a tap kick from the quarter. And so as we look back into the tunnels to where the players will be filing for the half-time break from Leichhardt Oval here in Sydney, the half-time Tooth Cup final score is Balmain 5, Parramatta 4. We come back to Leichhardt for the third quarter, and uh, Parramatta back onto the field to see that that win that was favoring Balmain for the first two quarters has probably faded fractionally as Glover comes away with it Webster over the top this is Stephen Edge now beats him out towards the 22 line Gildich wants it Gerard Win on the blind side. Comes up a Balmain player. And Webster's made a dramatic improvement in the uh, last three or four weeks. He, uh, he played well here tonight. Too. Yes, he made his debut about four weeks ago and uh, was a little bit tentative, but certainly he's uh, gone ahead in leaps and bounds and uh, a lot more authority and vigour in his play. Mm. And uh, as you said, Frankie, he's having a top game in the season. Rod Morris. Eight metres from the 22. Knight, Whitaker, a dummy for him, Martin. <laughs> yes, it certainly was uh, a very flat move then. It was a well rehearsed one, but it certainly wasn't executed too, uh, too well. Oh, Sterling intercepting for Parramatta. Looks up and just cheekily smiles at Olsen Philippina before playing it for this man, Peter Wynn. Now Sterling beats him. Right on the halfway line. I'm told we'll probably do a season with the Redcliffe Club in Brisbane next year. Sterling, Patterson, Neil Hunt. Hunt, there's a chance on for Kenny. Bell might have been broken. Kenny holding it up. Then to Collins. Yes, it was good defence there, guys. Oh, Particularly good defence by Schaefer that uh, uh, manoeuvred. Kenny into a situation where uh, he only had one way to go and then right. the Balmain cover defence was coming across and of course at that stage then it wasn't much good giving it That's to Collins because there was enough... the No, it was good play by Schaefer. Schaefer's had an outstanding game for Balmain. Fed by Knight, won by Balmain. Pierce, taken by Wynn and Patterson. Schaefer. Whitaker, Morris, Schaefer, got tripped in us and Gregory Streamer. Joking. Knight, Martin, Webster. Ooh. Thought about giving it to McMahon before he saw the blue and gold jumper of Ed Selkowitz. McMahon. 
Let's get out of here. That's a good oh. kick out. Right on the halfway line, the scrum will form just a shade to the Parramatta side. And just while we uh, give in the praise to uh, Phil Schaefer, of course, you've got to be a little bit critical of Kenny because in a situation like that, he should have come in and made Schaefer take him. So rather right. than going across a little bit of cross field, he should have uh, committed Schaefer to the That's tackle. Right. Indicated the lack of experience there, Keith. Yes, I is. mean, you, you want to use as much of the ground as you possibly can instead of getting wedged onto that touch line. So it's Sterling for Parramatta with the ball. Sharp. Had a very good game, Steve Sharp, in the semi final against uh, Western Suburbs, you might remember. Sterling, Beetson, picked up by Glover, and nicely picked up in cover by Percy Knight. They work in the blind side a lot, Frank. They certainly are, working Glover's wing all the time. Beats and is on the blind. mother of Balmain players. Parramatta's last fortnight has been a heavy one. Manly, Wests, the Cup Final, then Canterbury, then St George, now Patterson, now Kenny. Quick hands to Solkowitz. He's headed for the corner. He steps inside Solkowitz. Throws a pass in desperation, does he? No, he's still in possession. Five metres out from the line. Hilditch now calls on Peter. Goes for Michael Patterson, but referee Hartley has called a halt. It was another game by oh, Schaefer, wasn't yes, it? Because yeah. he just went straight for the winger, saying to uh, Wayne Pierce coming across, yes, you well. take Salkowitz and I'll look after the winger. And just, uh, Pierce did it too. Just let me tell you, before we get carried away, Hartley had indicated six tackles. So, the scrum one by Balmain, and Knight gives it to Schaefer, and Schaefer is tackled just inside his own 22. Knight. Sterling over the top. Sharp down below. Whitaker, Martin, Peter Wynn, the tackler. Five four still in favour of Balmain. Filipana and uh, the Kiwi international taken by Wynn. McMahon lost one down, which bounces badly, picked up by, and he gets a one-hander dangerously back to Webster. And uh, they're just back inside their quarter line on the sixth tackle now, Balmain. McMahon, a penalty, Parramatta inside the five. Six minutes gone, third quarter. A little bit of panic, Balmain's play, or they're just a little bit over-anxious, over-adventurous. Yes, that, uh, those one-handed passes in your own quarter are a bit uh, dicey, aren't they? Especially when the opposition are moving through so quickly as uh, Parramatta are. Well, we're in that uh, vital third quarter, as we've uh, often been accused of... Uh, Overemphasizing. Yes. Morris. Good tackle, Hilditch. Martin. That was not George Doniger, but in fact Frank Hyde. <laughs> Knight, Webster, there's a gap. Beetson closes it with the help of Patterson. Or was it Edge? It was Edge. Knight, Lavers. Oh, Pringle! Could have well for the prize. Hildage plays it outside his 22 line. This is Neil Hunt. A youngster who could well turn a loss or a seeming loss into a victory with that extravagant step of his so could this man peter win both danger players for balmain to uh, contend with gerard the big man now where's his support here comes one glover and Schaefer did well, Sterling's in support, and the little man is in the touch just inside the 22, but that was good football by Jeff Gerrard. Yes, it certainly was. He looks as if he's come back to the form that earned in your selection, Frank. Yes. Oh, yes, he's a, he's a natural front rower now, Pete, and yet he has the pace of a second round. Yes, and good football sense, too, when he oh, right, threw yeah. a very good pass to Glover. The man of the match tonight will have uh, a vital star award, and that'll be announced after the presentation of the trophies.
and he'll have that choice of great prizes, the National Video Cassette Recorder, the Color Camera, or the Porter Pack Recording Unit from National Panasonic and Electronic Sales and Rentals. Percy Knight to feed this scrum just inside his quarter line, as you can see. Penalty to Parramatta. Now that's a loose arm, as the indication uh, from Hartley. Saturday's big game for Channel 10 viewers here in Sydney, South and West at Lidcombe should be a bottler of a game. 6 to 7.30, the only full match replay in Sydney television. You'll see it here on 10. There's not much point in McMahon going over to ask for a ruling there. He's got to have a talk to his hooker and Lane Whittaker and make sure that he doesn't go into a situation yeah, like that with a loose arm. Incidentally, Michael Collins is coming up for, I think it's his fifth attempt. Am I right, uh, Ray? Yes, attempt five. He's kicked two out of four. Uh, this breeze has certainly, um, well, it appears as though it's blown itself out, Frank Hyde. Yes, yes. Although he kicked uh, uh, one in the first half in a similar position of this on the other side of the ground. Larry Corrower and Wayne Wiggum getting warmed up to come on for Balmain. An interesting one, though, is uh, who are they going to replace uh, to put Wayne Wiggum in particular on the field because Schaefer's having such a game at fullback. Yes. Probably put one on for you and one for Laurie Nichols. Uh, probably the uh, joking Joyce. Don't get upset now. Here comes Collins. He's missed it. And uh, so it comes to the 22 for the drop restart. There have been five scrum penalties and four of them have been against Balmain. The drop by McMahon. Hey, most of them have been within kicking range. They all have. They all have. Neil Hunt now. Well, I think Keith and Frank are a little bit inclined to think the Tigers might get away with this cup final. No. I'm not prepared to tear my ticket up, though. No, um, I feel that the Balmain are falling back into that, waiting for, for Paramount to come. Uh, instead of moving up and knocking them down, that allowed Gerard to go through that last time. Uh, so that was a, a pass from Beetson that... Uh, a lot of people will probably remember as being a mistake against the international ball as the reserves come on for Balmain, but they probably won't stop to remember that he has made a couple of probing openings for his side and made several very hard and legitimate tackles in the first 25 minutes. Yes, well, certainly uh, Phil Johnny Davidson can feel well satisfied, and uh, they should certainly get a pat on the back from Denny's study. They did a mighty job to pair of them, and uh, they did Balmain throw. back from dinner study but Laurie Nichols is certainly doing just that so this is Rod Morris walking the familiar trail or running it up the center nice oh. Pringle mm. yes there's no cohesion there at the oh, moment oh I don't I don't think Pringle expected that one well, of course, he's just slotted into the side now. Uh, Ronnie Pillen has been the uh, the regular second rower, but because of the uh, the pre-match ruling, of course, yep. uh, Neil Pringle went from reserve straight into the team. Knight, Filipana, Soccer Parramatta player picked up by Pierce, and the tackler was uh, Steve Sharp. Correct ruling. Knight. He slid it, oh, that's forward, deliberately forward to Rod Morris. And Hartley was right on the spot to give the correct ruling. As he was when he indicated to Balmain that they had six more tackles to go. And unfortunately for Balmain, that was one pass that went to hand, Frank. Yes. But there's no way it could have been anything other than no. forward, the way the, the, the uh, opposition were placed there. So the tap will be taken by Edge and Glover. Could well come round him. They had a little chat as they uh, meandered up to this spot. But it's Gerard, who's just outside the Balmain 22. Eight minutes from three-quarter time, Sterling Hilditch. And the skipper has tackled two metres out. Penalty to Parramatta. Let's see that on the disc. Let's see that on the disc. I think he's uh, got him for actually 
infringing the man tackled uh, over overindulgence I call it but uh, you see it again Hilditch well that's what no, he's got Morris it was, for no it was, a, it was a punch from, from Webster I think was it <coughs> look to me I thought it was more or less the fact that he uh, had tackled him and then as he got up he upended him again or that Steve Labor no, no, it was a difficult situation. Yeah. I, don't, I think it was difficult to determine uh, what the penalty was for, actually. There was probably we'll see it again, a, a couple of sort of half infringements. Yeah, so I think you'll find that it was later. See it again. I think it's... Well, uh, that's Webster and Morris. I think it's Morris. You watch Morris now when Hildish gets up to play it. Watch this. There it is. But then again, he seemed to release him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I think it might be a rather fortunate penalty for the... And well, they've had a couple of those. He's got two points. And Parramatta lead this cup final by six points to five. And that big crowd up there on the hillside of the ground, uh, along with uh, all others, uh, well, they're not leaving. They have got a real spine game of rugby league on their hands. It may not have been the most fashionable game, but it's got all the excitement of cup fever. Neil Hunt. I feel it's very important now for Balmain to play the game in Parramatta's territory. I think the Parramatta forwards are um, starting to make good inroads, Frank. Yes. They're pretty powerful, and uh, of course, you're going to have a situation now where they're going to be under pressure and possible penalties. Sharp. Now, there's Wigan, who's made three tackles in a row there, and I think that uh, he missed the fourth one, but. Uh, put down that'll be six to go Steve Sharp dived on it for Parramatta sorry Frank I have to stop uh, they have to stop uh, Parramatta from the rucks instead of waiting till they penetrate and then catch them up Sterling win on his outside going inside now this is Kenny and Cordova makes the tackle Sterling Gerard Whitaker around the legs non-stop 80-minute footballer is Neil Whittaker sharp last tackle for Parramatta Sterling will probably kick scrums against him at the moment Beetson looking for Patterson picking up Neil Hunt and Hunt is over the halfway line he's a pretty good footballer this kid and he's taken it down 10 meters out from the 22 line yes and so is the bloke that gave him a pass a pretty good footballer Beetson my word. This is certainly a well rehearsed move, and Beaton always has plenty of time. He's sending this that little bit yard deeper in uh, in attack and making it difficult for the Balmain defence to get up to him. Yeah. And uh, he's got two or three runners off him. This is what Balmain aren't doing with their ball player in first and eight. Important scrum this way. It's a Parramatta ball. Oh, nearly a mistake Ooh. as Patterson tries to make the best of it. Kenny tries to slide through a gap taken by Collower. Peter Wynn says, give me a quick play the ball, Kenny, if you can. And he works the line side, but it all fell apart there. Edge now. Deep inside Balmain territory, 6-5 in favour of the Eels. Beats and runs blind. This man is sharp going the other Ten metres out. Hartley calling the Tigers outside the five. Hilditch. Nine metres out from the line still. One point. Parramatta leading Balmain by. Beats him. Patterson took a jolting tackle. Let's name that player. It was. Sterling. A grub. A Marty Gurr grub. And it's still being played. And Wayne Pierce comes away for Balmain. Labors. Three minutes from three-quarter time. McMahon. He's had it taken from him. It's a Balmain penalty. No, it was Sterling. So he pointed to Sharp when he, uh, when he gave the penalty as he walked up there. Uh, uh, Sterling dived on it. Aha. Uh -huh. Those two fair-headed fellows have got us again. <laughs>
But penalties like that, Frank, needless to say, uh, could could cost a cup final. Without doubt. Short pass for Pringle. Night again. Well, oh, my goodness, he looked like he might have been able to give one for Wayne Wiggum. Here's Philip Parner, but he's tackled by a man in an offside position, Patterson. Mm. Two minutes out from three-quarter time. Stephen Edge gave Michael Patterson a push and said, Stop arguing and get back out of it. And then Patterson tripped and uh, it looked as though Edge had in fact pushed his teammate over. McMahon's kick for touch will land on the grandstand roof. I don't know whether you heard that thunderous roar, but it was like uh, Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Knight to Filipana. Knight. Miranda. <laughs> Pierce, Morris, Lavers. 60 seconds from three-quarter time. Knight, Martin, Filipana, the run round, and here's McMahon. The Balmain bust oh, and put behind Wiggum. Picked up by Pringle for Balmain. Tackle uh, Pringle uh, by Cotton Glover and into touch. Yes, well, it was certainly another opportunity there, although the Parramatta defence was coming across pretty quickly. Yes, Frank, Frank. They're, they're defending well, Kurt. They are defending Parramatta. well. They're causing Balmain to run sideways, too. Yes, I think Lloydie Martin's got to start attacking from the 5-8 spot. Mm. Penalty, no. He wants it again. should be in, not yes, 15. He's not, he's not entitled to take him in that far. Knight. Martin. Picked up, Martin. Oh. Knocked on by Sterling. And another scrum now, which will barely have time to pack. And the three-quarter time scoreline in the cup final of 80 is six points to five in favour of Parramatta over Balmain. 80. Balmain looking for $87,000 and a mistake made on the opening kickoff by Neil Hunt and a scrum will go down 10 metres out from the Parramatta line and this is of course the opportunity now that Balmain have to uh, to force pressure on Parramatta either from uh, uh, an incorrect scrum feed or possession from the Balmain but it's Parramatta's mm -hmm. ball mm -hmm. Sterling quite happy to dive on it and then take the tackle of Webster Peter Wynn tries to take it away, but that could prove a very costly mistake by Neil Hunt. Sharp. Bringley getting through a lot of oh, work in he's, defense. He certainly is. Balmain must keep them in this quarter. And the six tackles uh, run out. Time out for uh, Sharp, who may be suffering from cramp, I think. Yes, well, I think it's very important, as you said, Frank, to, uh, for Balmain, though, to at least keep Bal uh, Parramatta in their quarter for the six tackles, make them kick, and uh, hopefully get possession. Ster Sterling, a very good tactical kicker, uh, gains a lot of yardage, yeah. doesn't he? But, uh, you know, Sir McMahon is sta standing very deep there, anticipating it. As one of those vantage points, the crowd has occupied Leichhardt. Probably looking, be looking to get across to the touchline a little bit more as the uh, six tackle comes up. Yeah. Rain starting to fall as the umbrellas come to the fore. And Sharp is about to play the ball now. Second tackle. Ed's looking for Sterling. Here he is. And a torpedo straight to Miranda. They're all apparently onside. Wiggum could prove a, a match winner for Balmain. Fresh, talented centre. 
Miranda. Knight, Whitaker, Lavers. Whichever way you look at this cup final and whoever wins, there's certainly going to be many hard luck stories told after this game. Wigan playing it on the last. Knight, Martin, Wigan, and held by Kenny. Well, Parramatta's defence is very organised at this stage, Keith, and there has to be something extra special from Balmain to penetrate them, not like it was in those early quarters. No, well, they're very, very flat, of course, and the uh, the outside forwards, particularly Beetson, who's standing mm. very wide in the ruck, is wedging Balmain back in for you. No, I think Percy Knight's got that ball. ball. Yes, he has. And away from the dummy half goes McMahon. Inside the Parramatta 22 line now. Knight, Martin, chunky little fellow from New Zealand. Scrums are reading out at 9-7 to Balmain. Philippana, also from the, uh, the Shaky Isles. I think there's got to be a few more variations. Parramatta a bit yeah. thin on the blind side, and uh, Balmain is taking the play the one way all the time. Webster, mm. down by Selkowitz. Inside the five. Right in front of the uprights. Which most certainly will see Balmain in front seven six in a matter of seconds. Yeah, what a tight fire it's been. <laughs> I wonder if there's any thought coming through Wayne Marina's mind. There's a lot of money involved, That's isn't right. there? Yes. I wouldn't think so. It's a, he's a very talented player and a good pressure kicker. But uh, certainly... Uh, well, he couldn't have it any easier than this one. No. Sometimes the easy ones are not the, uh, the easiest to land. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the easiest looking ones. Yes. Well, that's a look of uh, gaiety on Laurie Nichols' uh, face as he... Um, he already has the, the points on the ball. Ball. But it wouldn't be a look of joy on Jeff Gerrard's face. He uh, was the... ...who infringed the five. He's one of those three men standing in front of the uprights, motionless at the moment. Miranda. 16 minutes out from the full-time siren. A little dance. And he hits it sweetly. It's no, it's, he's missed it. My goodness gracious. He kicked it too hard. He, Turn just, it up. he just flung himself at it. Where's Barnsley? Is Barnsley okay? <laughs> he's collapsed. No, well, unfortunately, uh, they've been missed before in oh, situations like that. Yes. And... Uh, it was a bad one, of course, for, uh, for Balmain and Wayne Miranda, but there's, uh, there's still 15 minutes left in this game. It's up to Balmain now to pull themselves together. That must have certainly given uh, Parramatta a tremendous lift. Wigan. Oh, well, this Cup final's had everything now. Russell Fairfax. Exactly what's going through the mind of Wayne Miranda at this very moment. Webster streaming ahead across to Wigan. Taken by Gerard. And this might be just the, the, uh, the spur that Balmain needed. Now Morris. Corolla. Knight. Sliding it for McMahon to give it to Martin. A kick for the corner. A shoulder charge on Martin. Balmain might have gone in. No. Into touch says uh, the referee. He's taken the corner. Is into touch in goal. It'll be a 22 restart. Gee, it was oh. a, a non-offending side, which is Parramatta. And it what was a, a clever kick by Martin, oh, wasn't it? Was. Very clever kick, but Percy Knight really coming into the game now. Uh, two very clever plays that uh, created opportunities for Balmain. Beatson. Ten metre gain, and every one of those metres will represent a thousand dollars. Steve Sharp, that's a good run by the kid, and he's only a boy, believe me. to win counting down 14 minutes of the cup final to go Parramatta in front by a point and uh, I, I must say and I'm not particularly worried about which side wins the cup final 
other than to say I hope for Wayne Miranda's sake that it's not just that point margin that uh, we see on the scoreboard at, uh, at finality. Neil Hunt into Balmain territory. Gerard back for Pilditch now. Beetson, who played in the 75 Cup winning side for Eastern Suburbs before coaching to East to a Cup final victory in 78. Rod Morris getting through a ton of work out there. He Frank. certainly is. Gerard turns it back for Stephen Edge. And they're four, minute, four metres, I should say, outside the Balmain 22 line. Parramatta haven't been to a Cup final since 75. Those Parramatta players are all on side. It's dropped oh. and by Corowa and that ball was just sitting there for the taking and Corowa took it oh a mistake in the play the ball but McManus away from the in goal area oh and he's passed to Wiggum who almost lost it Miranda's tackled out on the far side of the ground oh that's dangerous football from Balmain Kenny kicks indiscriminately although legally says referee Hartley now Rod Morris play back inside the Balmain 22 line. Pringle. A shoulder charge by Gerard and he's taken eventually by Beetson. Came onto the ball strong now. Yes, yeah, he's running on the ball. 12 minutes out. Corowa. Thought about passing. Edge one tackler. The other man was Win. Morris. And it's down there for Lavers to probe even further. Up in number 10 and Hilditch in 11 make the tackle. 12 metres from the halfway line is Balmain as Percy Knight goes ahead and looks for Corowa, finds him, loses it. Parramatta have lost a toe to head by Filipano. Referee Hartley is going to put a scrum down. Percy Knight certainly creating opportunities yes, there, Frank. that's right. The idea is right with uh, Corowa coming in there on the burst, but he's handling it. Quick shot went to the screen of an umbrellaed crowd as Parramatta win a valuable scrum and Sterling well contained by Percy Knight. Neil Hunt and he's almost through grabbing him by the scruff of the neck was Steve Lavers. It's been a great final. Oh yeah. He's had everything. Ed. 12 metres from the Balmain quarter. Gerard. 10 minutes to go. Sterling. Grounded by Martin. Beetson's organising things around this rush. And going with it is Solkowitz back to Beetson. Across now for Hilditch. And the skipper looks and uh, throws a pass for Collower for Whittaker. Knight. McMahon. Oh, there was a clash heavily. Very heavy clash between McMahon and Hilditch. Morris. 6-5 in uh, Parramatta's favour. A long ball for Cordova, who's put it down for Peter Wynn. Well, Corowa has come on to replace uh, Davison. And uh, he's gone out there with butter on his fingers, apparently. Though that might, have, might not have been the easiest one for him to take. Sterling, Hunt, this rain, not heavy, but coming down sufficiently enough to make that ball just greasy, just slippery. And it's not the time for fancy football at the moment, I would ask that. The father of rugby league, uh, Frank Hyde. No, it certainly isn't, uh, but they should get closer. They, the handling should be better than it is. I mean, if, if the players keep closer in this sort of weather, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the play. But uh, there are some long and dangerous passes being thrown. But well, Balmain uh, can't play anything else, Frank. It's yeah. no good them playing it, right. because they're being contained that's by right. Parramatta. And they much more, they're not getting the ball. No, well, they're behind six mm. plays, so they've got to that's attack. Right. They've got to uh, take uh, advantage of any opportunity of opening the game up. Yeah. Calling that scrum in field again. It's supposed to go down on the 10 metre line, isn't it? From, that's right. From the touch line. Well, that's of course if it was so, um, a, a scrum that uh, goes through the ball going into touch. 
And Knight's speed was uh, very much pro Balmain, but it came out, oh, a swinging right to the left that was from Gerard as the scrum broke up. Well, Sterling plays it now for um, Steve Sharp. He realises there's a second row berth up for grabs at Parramatta. Um, or should I say a great battle on for a second row berth at Parramatta. But I think you'll see the name A beats them back there on a firm basis come next weekend. Parramatta content to contain the ball, oh, they yes. control the ball and graft away down in this area. And if the opportunity arises, of course, well, they will spin it out. Beats them. This is the bloke that's going to do it. Oh by Kenny but taken well by Wigan this is the last they'll be looking for Sterling here he is there goes the bomb Patterson leads the rush he's well on side McMahon is under it though and he's lost it and it's Kurawa oh Kurawa had a kick at it and then he had a hand at it and got it over the dead ball line in the nick of time see that again if you wish if oh. you're a Balmain supporter be careful it doesn't frighten you that was after the kick that was very closet, to say the least. It's been closet on two occasions, out in the full. Oh, oh a, a penalty right in front of the uprights for <laughs> Parramatta. What a mistake. Well, now, let me explain how there it was. Conaway had a kick. He missed it with a the kick. Then he got it over the dead ball line with a hand. But from the ensuing line dropout, it's been put over the touchline on the full. Was yeah. it Alan McMahon? Yes, it was. Yep. And it wasn't hard to pick. Frank was if you knew it was oh, going to be close yeah. I'd be hard in my mouth Jeez. that chant going out now is the one that um, signifies that the Parramatta audience are quite happy but oh Alan McMahon and Wayne Miranda they must be saying to themselves oh the one that got away that's well, all these things happen in rugby league. Oh, it's yes. probably not the one that got away because there's been a lot of opportunities that uh, Balmain have had to uh, yeah. to uh, well, with try scoring opportunities yep. and passes have gone astray, but I yep. give a lot of credit to uh, Parramatta because they've controlled yep. the ball well, they've they played it through have. the forwards where they sprint this, okay. their defence has been non-stop throughout, and uh, even though Balmain has probed the, uh, probed the openings as uh, Collins kicks the goal, and Parramatta go to an 8 points to 5 lead, uh, they were the leaders at this stage, but there's still uh, 6 minutes remaining, and this game has had everything maybe we'll have uh, a finish reminiscent of what the uh, finishes that we've had in the past Yes uh, Parramatta would be considered unlucky to lose it at this stage on the football plate. They've grafted well. Balmain have had their opportunities, but bad handling and, uh, and bad passing has uh, brought them undone. Well, this ball going down into the in goal, and uh, Neil Hunt looks at it. He's, oh. he's forced to pick it up. And uh, he's out oh, and around step, Wiggum. He's got an extravagant step. Mm, good step. And he's out to a point just inside the 22 line. Beatson is the dummy half. That's Steve Sharp. Well, Balmain need that ball now. They've the got to get it now. The clock shows five and a quarter to go. Rain getting heavier. Glover. Glover almost burrowed his way through. He's been a hard man for Balmain to contain tonight. I'll tell you what, as a testimony, or maybe a tribute is the right word, to this game, and that's a good ball from Gerard to Hildes to Edge, but as a testimony to this game's appeal to this crowd, they're getting drenched those without the umbies but they're standing out there in their multitudes as Patterson takes it to within nine meters now Sterling will want the ball now I would think for the kick Hunt takes it away and uh, a scrum five meters on the Parramatta side of halfway hmm. well, I thought Sterling would have got the ball then for the grub kick to put the scrum down on the Balmain side of the halfway and give Percy Knight the feed Pillen is on as a replacement for Pringle, is it? Yes. Pringle's given good service to Balmain. He's given good service to Rugby League, but tonight it's been a, a big effort to do what yeah. he's done under the controversial circumstances that he was forced into the game. Percy Knight. Trying his stomach out is Percy Knight. Here's Pillen. Well, Balmain are going on to one of their final lunges. Pierce cut down by Patterson, and that hurt Wayne Pierce. Philip Hunter, Martin, Webster, up goes Hilditch, away goes Morris, a pop of the ball back from Miranda, and the tackle made by Jeff Gerard. Pierce is injured, clutching an ankle. Martin 
Knight coming up as Pillen. It's out to McMahon. There's a chance for the Tigers. It's gone to Korowa. Korowa's tackled on the 22 line by Sterling. Last tackle for Balmain now. Oh. Knight. Jeeves and Idol. Oh, yes. Mile Ross. Side. And it's Parramatta's ball yeah, from Stephen Ed. Oh. He was a mile off. Oh. The crowd, 17,829. Keith, um, maybe you you are right, but let me assure you there was a, a lengthy delay in the transmission of the ball from the man who played it to the did, dummy half. Did you not say enough? I did not. Okay. Martin, just inside the 22 line. Filipana. A chance now for Balmain. Three points in arrears. They need to score. Martin, Knight, Webster. That tackler is Patterson, who has tackled his insides out. Whittaker, Sterling the tackler. Balmain on their last tackle. They'll probably bomb Knight, Martin. Well, he tried to get a kick in, and it's dived on for Parramatta by Peter Sterling. Mm. Players are hobbling all over the paddock at the moment. Like the Battle of Trafalgar at the moment, that scene out there with players that left was, of camera. It was great Parramatta defence during that sortie from Balmain. Give them credit. Hunter's playing it. Lloyd Martin crotchetly is getting away from the play. Little Michael Collins comes away, the man who's kicked three uh, or four goals now. Representative of the Parramatta scoreline, Sterling's kick down to Miranda. And the Parramatta half goes forward. But so does Miranda for Balmain. And again, Patterson is around the legs for the, uh, for the Eels. Two metres on the Parramatta side of Hunter Whitaker is tackled by Sharp. It's as if these two sides are almost too tired to score any more points. As Knight floats one out for Wigan, that pass is over the shoulder of Corowa and into touch on the Balmain side. Balmain are making too many mistakes to win this game. Yes. Uh, or <laughs> deserve to win it. That's right. They, uh, they've only got themselves yep. to blame for uh, the squandering possession yep. the way they have. We estimate two minutes to go. The Percy Knight feed gives Balmain a scrum win. Pierce, Martin, and he floats one. There's an overlap for Balmain as McMahon goes to the halfway and beats win. Serves it back for Pierce. He turns it back oh. and Patterson uh, couldn't pick it up. Knight gives it away to, to Morris. Morris surges towards the scoreboard side now. McMahon, they're on six more tackles, the Tigers. Knight goes up the centre, gets the pass down, does he? No, he takes it to ground under the tackle of... McMahon, and it's gone to Wigan. Oh. <laughs> I thought that could have been a touch forward. Yeah, I thought it was forward. Yeah, I thought it was offside, really. Just outside the Parramatta 22 line. Knight, Connor was there. This man is Lavers. Balmain throwing everything by the kitchen sink at Parramatta. They're three points in arrears. They've scored one try to nil, though, as Webster charging ahead. They're 12 metres out from the line now. And this is Whittaker, and he got a pass away to Pillen. Oh, lost! And it's picked up by McMahon. Hartley is down, looking across the ground, saying it's gone forward and we'll have a scrum. But oh, what, what an ulcer of a final! It's over. The Parramatta Reels have won their first cup. Eight points to five. And never have I witnessed a more controversial final, both on and off the field, and what a champion player that is, or that man is, who has been involved in three cup finals, down there getting lost in that mass of children, Arthur beats him. Parramatta 8, Balmain 5 in the 1980 Tooth Cup Final. We'll be back with the presentation of prizes in a moment champions of 1980 Parramatta make that trek up the stairway now to receive the Tooth Cup of 1980 and the individual trophies and a $91,000 check to the runners-up will go $45,000 in prize money the cup and check will be presented by Mr. Harry Alf, managing director of Tooth and Company 
And the individual trophies will be presented by Fest, chairman of Tooth and Company. Harry Alts giving the cup to Ron Hilditch, the Parramatta captain. And uh, a very jubilant Ron Hilditch it is as he re receives his own pewter, as will each of the Parramatta players. And he holds them both aloft. A very memorable occasion for Ron Hilditch, who is flanked behind him by Jeff Gerrard. A man who took over the captaincy of this side from Ray Price, who watched this match from the sidelines tonight. Jeff Gerrard, Peter Wynn, as uh, the necessary press photographs are taken. And the two men who hunt as a pair, Ron Hilditch and Jeff Gerrard, and now Peter Wynn hold the cup aloft near Neville Glover. Eddie Salkowitz, who did his job in defence in the centre. man, Michael Collins. And now Brett Kenny, Stephen Edge, Peter Sterling, and Neil Hunt, Michael Patterson, Stephen Sharp, and Arthur Beetson, who was the man of the match here at Leichhardt tonight. Yes, that leads me on to the man of the match award for tonight. One point went to Stephen Sharp, two points went to Neil Hunt. The national prize from the National Panasonic and Electronic Sales and Rentals people and three points in the Superstar Award went to Arthur Beetson. That means that the Tooth Cup Superstar following the allocation of points tonight and receiving the three-week holiday to Europe with Singapore Airlines, Trafalgar Tours and Hyde Park Hotel because on account back of votes tonight he was the man receiving more votes press than his main counterpart and rival the superstar from the tooth cup is Parramatta halfback Peter Sterling <laughs> and so the referee Greg Hartley his touch judges have received their golden pewters from tooth and company and in fact there go the victors of the 1980 inaugural tooth cup the champions along with their superstar Sterling and their man of the match, Arthur Beetson, and congratulations from everybody here at Leichhardt, not only to the winners, but to the gallant losers, the Balmain Tigers.